You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Hey everyone, before we get to today's game, we wanted to announce that we're going to be at SporkleCon 2023. It's taking place September 8th through 10th in Washington, D.C. and is the largest trivia and quiz con in the country. Yeah, and SporkleCon will be giving away $20,000 in cash prizes and donations over that weekend. Amazing. There's over 50 events for all skill levels, both individual and team, so it should be a lot of fun. We've got a little something for you, too. If you use the code TRIVIALITY, you'll save $15 off a full weekend pass. Details and tickets can be found at sporklecon.com. And even more fun, on Sunday, me, Jeff, and Ken will be hosting an event that you can play on live and kind of hang out with us. Go to sporklecon.com and use our code TRIVIALITY to save $15 off a full weekend pass. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil. I'm here in the studio with Jeff and Ken today, uh, our second uh, recording back from our little vacation. How is everyone doing? Wow, just giving all the secrets away, Neil. We can't get over the the vacation time. <laughs> I know we can't. Uh, our vacation was uh, was one it week. Was glorious, but we're back. Uh, yeah, In podcast land. It's been no weeks. That's so. correct. Yeah, we we our our goal as a podcast from day one was never miss an episode, and we haven't. So we're now, gonna... now last week, Neil, you were in a little bit of pain due to your mouth surgery. What about this week? Uh, I'm in basically the same amount of pain. Uh, the only difference is maybe like one ice pack worth of relief for about 20 minutes yeah does it feel like almost like as if we had recorded back-to-back episodes it's almost like we were yeah is that we have like you multiple had like recordings one, in one hour day. of healing maybe in between yeah maybe ate some applesauce for lunch or something yeah that's basically what it feels like mm. can't confirm if it's ex- exactly that but that's what it feels like gotcha. um but um speaking of my mouth uh it is <laughs> hurting uh uh, pretty bad. So I'm not going to actually participate today. I'll just be keeping score and, and adding a, a quip here and there. Um, and Matt isn't here today either. He is still in Puerto Rico looking for the uh, invention of the pina colada and other things. So we wish him the best. But we have some very special guests with us today. Um, we're going to start with our, our guests who are going to be playing today's game uh, coming to us from Port Orchard, Washington, Oakland Five supporters on Patreon. Janelle and Jay, how are you both? We're doing great. So glad to be here. Nice to have you. Yeah, so happy to have you here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then also uh, what special trip you just came back from, because we think uh, the listeners would enjoy to hear it. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we live in Port Orchard, Washington. I'm an optician here. Um, we just came back from a week in Iceland, and so we had a fantastic trip, and it was just really special and amazing there. We encourage everyone to try to get there if they can. The one thing that's not special and amazing in Iceland, though, is what? The fermented shark. The fermented right. shark. So uh, that's going to be your team name today, correct? Fermented it, shark. Absolutely, yes. All right. Not to disparage the Icelandic people, I'm sure. No, no. No. I mean, it's, a, to them. It's, it's gross. When it's Ken gross. and I were there, we talked to a few locals, and they did admit that it's more of like a traditional thing than like people actually still eat it. Yeah. But That's like here in Chicago. Like we don't really eat deep dish, uh, but it's famous for Speak deep for dish. Speak for yourself. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you so much, Janelle and Jay, for supporting the show and for being here today. We're super excited to have you. You're going to be going up against Ken and Jeff. We'll figure out their team name in a minute, but we need a host for today's game, and we're so excited to have an Oakland Five supporter on Patreon from San Diego, Adam Large. How are you, Adam? Great. Um, how are you guys today? Doing great. Thank you so much for putting together today's game. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Sure, yeah. I'm Adam. I am currently a data scientist at a biotech startup down in San Diego, California. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I like to play magic, play video games. I crochet sometimes. You might see some of those appear in the questions today, but that's basically about me. Very cool. Yeah. Do you ever and- crochet while playing magic? Uh, it'd be that would hard. Be exceptionally difficult. I w- you, you wait I- for your uh, your opponent to, to play their turn. 
That could yeah. be the ultimate mind game. Like you're crocheting. Like this guy's never gonna have a yeah. great move down here. I've I've made I've crocheted magic accessories like ah. uh, dice bags. And things. That's cool. Yeah. There you go. And might I say, uh, if there was to be a new band formed, I I think Adam Large and the Overtons would be a great band name. Just for the record, <laughs> it is a great band name. It's uh, a great band name. <laughs> Uh, with the first single, uh, Fermented Shark. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we have our team here of Fermented Shark, Janelle and Jay, and then Jeff and Ken. What do you want to be today? Well, since there's been a lot of uh, talk about Barbenheimer, you know, Barbenheimer sweeping the nation, I think we should uh, go ahead and reverse it because I actually saw Oppenheimer first. So let's be Oppen Barbie. Oppen Barbie. <laughs> let's go party. All right. Uh, so we have our teams, Oppen Barbie versus Fermented Shark. Let's throw it uh, to a special rules read. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream! It's special because it's the same one. It's the same one. It could have been anyone can put in there, but we'll never know until we hear the recording. Um, well, uh, I'm going to go back into the shadows here, like uh, Max von Sydow or something, and uh, I'll be keeping score. So take it away, Adam. Sure, yeah. So not to date this episode further, but when I got the email from Neil, I believe, uh, I was in line at San Diego Comic-Con. And so uh, I rearranged some of the questions to be a bit more fitting towards Comic-Con and add a couple new ones. So hopefully... Uh, you guys will enjoy it. <laughs> they're nothing that should require comic knowledge or pop culture knowledge, but uh, they're mostly just tangential, uh, you know, introductions. Sounds so good. hopefully this works out. And Ken, so, just for the record, and, and Adam, uh, last game I sat out because of my mouth, but I allowed one lifeline to the team playing, and I'll just, just for today, for the last time, uh, until I'm back fully next episode. Uh, lifeline? Lifeline. Janelle and Jay, if you have any lifeline for some sort of pop culture movie question, let me know. I'll be here. Otherwise, like I said, I'm in the shadows. All right. Then let's start with uh, question one. The elephant in the room this weekend was the writer and actor strike, resulting in panels that were either canceled or happened without any of the stars there to usually draw the huge crowds. Uh, so who is the current president of the Screen Actors Guild, known for her TV role when she played another matronry role? So a famous TV mom. Oh, is it uh, Patricia Heaton, maybe? Oh, I could, maybe. Okay. She was the mother on Home Improvement, you yeah? know? No, no, no Raymond. Ray, Ray, everyone loves Raymond, yeah. yeah. Let's go with Patricia Heaton. I was thinking Heaton. Patricia Richardson. <laughs> oh. We're going to go with Fran Drescher. And Fran Drescher is correct. Oh, nice poll. Really? Yes. I did not Fra know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's very outspoken about uh, the strike right now. You should read some of her, listen to some of her speeches. Uh, and she played the nanny, of course, mm. on TV. And the beautician to the beast. Question two. While it's hard to imagine Comic-Con without celebrities, you really can't imagine Comic-Con without the cosplayers. Within five years, in what year did cosplay start at the first World Science Fiction Convention in New York City? Bonus, what year did the word cosplay uh, was coined, also within five years? I'm feeling um, the dressing up in costume at the World Science Fiction Convention in New York was in the 60s. So I'm going to go with 65, give or take five years there. And then I don't think the term cosplay came in for a lot longer. Um, I'm going to go with 95, give or take five years. Interesting. We chose the same year for the term cosplay. A little bit later for the uh, dressing up. What did we say? Yeah, we just said 1980. We didn't know. All right. Uh, so cos the first cosplay uh, was all the way back in 1939. Whoa. Uh, it so was close. one woman. <laughs> and I think maybe her boyfriend as well. Uh, and then after that, people started doing it um in, in her footsteps. And then in uh, the word cosplay was coined from a Japanese term back in 1984. Hmm. I want to know what this woman back in the 1930s was dressing up as. Uh, I believe it was a uh, a book um, series. I mean, it would have had to yeah, be. It had to be, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Could have been a radio show, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the, the shadow. <laughs> Always just picturing her walking around with a book, so I'm glad you followed up with that. <laughs> yeah, some folk fiction type uh, sci-fi okay. book. Um, okay, 
So question three is the obligatory sports question. I had I thought Matt might be here, so I had to throw one in there. Uh, the Women's World Cup started this past weekend as well. All eyes are on the returning champs, the U.S. national women's team. One of the breakout players from the previous World Cup was Rose Lavelle, awarded the bronze ball, considered the third best player at the tournament, in her first World Cup run. What Big Ten school did she play for, being their freshman of the year in 2013 and midfielder of the year in 2015 and 2016? Well, Jeff, admittedly, women's soccer is not at the front of my mind, nor is men's soccer or any other men's sport besides hockey. <laughs> so um, I'm equally dis- disinterested is what I'm saying. Uh, I have no idea. Just trying to think of one that might be. Notre a- Dame. Big Ten? Not Big Ten. Uh, Michigan. That's a Big Ten. Uh, I want to go with this, though. Okay, then me, I guess. <laughs> we'll, I'm good, we'll go with what you have. <laughs> we'll go with what you have. We're going to guess Stanford. We have no information on this. Okay. Just a guess. So they say Stanford. We say? Penn State. Uh, unfortunately, it is University of Wisconsin-Madison. Oh. So go, close. Go yeah. Badgers. Right? Go Badgers, yeah. yeah. All right. You got I it. was in Wisconsin or in Madison during that uh, World Cup win, and everybody was wearing Roosevelt jerseys, even the little girls. It was quite a time, quite a summer that year. All right. Uh, question four. During Comic-Con, the trailer for Netflix's live-action adaptation of the One Piece series was dropped. In what African city was the most of the series filmed? The city was established in 1652 as a refilling station by the Dutch East India Company. All right, we are locked in here. I'm pretty sure I caught some of the uh, the press on this, so we're, we're going to lock in. What do you guys have? We're going to go with uh, Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Uh, Johannesburg. Good guess. It sounds I, Dutch. It's in Africa. Yeah. I just think, for some reason, I remember the press saying Cape Town. So we're going to say Cape Town. And Cape Town is right. Uh, both got South Africa, but uh, Cape Town is where it was filmed, and that's where it was founded in 1652. Hmm. Big film contingent in Cape Town. Okay, question five. One of the biggest retailers at Comic-Con is Funko, known for their vinyl figurines of licensed characters, both large heads and soulless black eyes. Uh, Funko was originally started by its creator, Mike Becker, because he wanted a coin bank in the shape of what famous fast food mascot? Like Funko Pops, the mascot's known for their size, though unlike Funko Pops, I'd say their belly is their most pronounced feature. <laughs> so the question is, what what mascot would have a big belly? A fast food mascot with a big belly. Is this uh, a Grimace? I was thinking Grimace. I was. This, is a, this isn't the Hamburglar, although I imagine. What about uh, Big Boy? Oh, yeah. His belly is actually kind of pronounced on the Big Boy, if I remember from the Austin Powers film in 1997. I just, like, I just really like the Grimace bank, though. But I kind of think Big Boy might be right. Uh, it's up to you. Let's go with Big Boy. All right. We also went with Big Boy. I think I had one of those banks. So, uh, And Big Boy is correct. Yep. I try to stop myself from like laughing too much at the discussion about Big Boy. Just just saying Big Boy over and over again is just was just too funny to me. Great reference by Jeff to Austin Powers. That was a great moment. The Big Boy spaceship. Uh, after five in the first round, the teams are tied at 20. So everyone's on the board and a lot of room to grow. All right. Question six. During Comic-Con, an award is given out for creative achievement in comic books. Named after a pioneer in comics who, among other things, popularized the term graphic novel and formalized the study of comic books with their book, Comics and Sequential Art. Who is this person who is not related to a famous Disney CEO with the same last name? We're going to go ahead and lock that in. All right. Uh, When I think of famous Disney CEOs, I think of Bob Iger. Who else can you think of? Not many. Um, I could think of more like comic book people. Okay. There's Alan Moore. Yeah. Um, I mean, Iger, that sounds okay. Okay. We'll, we'll guess Iger. We're going to go with the Will Eisner. Eisner. Uh, oh, Eisner. Michael Eisner. Yep. Uh, Will Eisner is the comic book pioneer. Yes. <sighs> Great poll. And that was a quick draw, too. You were right in. Uh, question seven. Another guest at Comic-Con it was this year was Rachel Smythe, who is known for a comic series, Lower Olympus, a modern retelling of a classic Greek myth. What Greek myth is this, which is related to the Greek myth of how spring happens, or the myth of season of spring? You guys uh, good to lock in on this one? Uh, good as we're going to be, I think. Yes. Good. All right. 
Yeah. So we get to discuss again, Jeff. So the myth about how spring happened, right? Is that yeah. Where? It's this not, isn't the it's uh, not Eurydice a, and... Orpheus and Eurydice. Yeah. Again, no. I don't think so. But let's say it. Okay. We'll At get least that's better. a Greek myth. But we think it might be Persephone. Yep. The abduction of Persephone, Hades of Persephone, anything in that range would be uh, perfectly acceptable. Yes. Hades Town, if you've listened to the, the Broadway show about that. I know. Well, that's... Yeah. So we got we got the wrong part of that. Wrong whole, name, but you were in the right you were in the right area. Yeah, but. you got I think you probably thought of it but didn't know the name. <laughs> uh okay. Uh Lore Olympus question eight. Lore Olympus is one of the many popular comic series that originally posted on Webtoon, an online comic distribution platform created by the Naver Corporation. In their home country, they're known for their search engine and affiliation with the Line Messenger service. For English speakers, it's often known for its multi language dictionary. Uh, also as an app on your phone. What country is Naver based in? Feel good about this one, I guess? We're saying we, we're we just going to guess. We have no idea. We're going to go with Switzerland. Okay. Uh, Switzerland, what I know about this is that Line is on my phone, and I use it to talk to my Japanese friends, and uh, Line is very uh, popular in Japan. So we're going to guess the parent company is Japan. Unfortunately, Line is Japanese, but the parent company is South Korean. <laughs> okay, oh. fair. Oh. It's it. Line is also in Korea, so yeah, that's that's fair. I, it was a fair guess and a fair wrong answer. Yeah, yeah. I was really worried about adding Line because like mm, that might actually throw people off. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of Japan, uh, one of the featured guests this year uh, was a US appearance by Junji Ito. Alongside his appearance, a trailer from Adult Swim was dropped for their anime adaptation of one of his best-known works, Uzumaki, in which a small coastal Japanese town is taken over by what? I don't know the uh, the plot line of this, Jeff, but I know the translation for the title is this. Mm -hmm. So let's just say that. Okay. Uh, We're kind of thinking about breaking down the word a little bit and trying to decide what Maki is. and We don't have... A strong feeling about it, but we're just gonna go with go with tuna. <laughs> okay, so maki is uh, maki is like roll or like right. circle. So yeah. uzumaki is a, a translation for spiral, oh, okay. um, which is the English translation for the title. I don't know exactly what the plot of that um, piece is, as I haven't read it, but we're just gonna say uh, spiral. Spiral is exactly what it is. Oh, uh, nice. The whole town whirlwinds, whirlpools, uh, people get turned into snails. Uh, <laughs> you will look at the world a little bit differently after you read that book. <laughs> I would like to see the tuna version, though. Oh, I yeah. think it'd be cool. Yeah. I think it'd be a giant tuna. The, awesome. the, the bluefin tuna gets its revenge. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, in Junji Ito's other book, Yo, uh, fish grow legs and then terrorize in town. So there's yeah. also a book about that as well. So everything turns into a spiral? Uh, yeah, so like in one one chapter, a woman's scar starts twisting and turning until her entire head becomes hollowed out through like a spiral. Um, people's hair becomes spirally and start like draining the life force. That's from their just the body. humidity, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a joke for Matt, who isn't here, it, that actually would have helped Peyton Manning throw a regular spiral. <laughs> nice. All right, question 10. Uh, Comic-Con isn't always about fictional worlds. NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory had a booth at Comic-Con this year to show off their mission to send a spacecraft into Jupiter's orbit. Attendees could add their names to be etched onto the spacecraft alongside a poem by poet laureate Ada Limon. Which of the Jupiter's moons will the spacecraft be studying, including the possible presence of an ocean and thus may harbor extraterrestrial life? All right, we want to lock that in, maybe. How are you feeling? I mean, there's a lot of moons. There's a lot of moons, okay. Um, the one that always stands out the most when I uh, when I think of Jupiter moons, I have an idea. I don't know if I'm... Yeah. We want to just... We've yep. got an idea for it, so... Oh, sure. We'll lock in. All right, Jeff? So, I... We got Europa. I think We it's... got Ganymede. We got Io. We got Callisto. Callisto. Those are the four Galilean moons. Of them, I believe the first one you said, Europa, is the one that they're that, like really keen on. That may contain uh, water underneath the uh, a surface of ice. So that's what we guessed. All right. And we went with uh, Ganymede. 
Ganymede is, is good, but Europa is exactly what oh, they are right. saying. Good it's job, Europa, guys. Europa Clipper mission. And then you could still add your name to be etched uh, online as well if you want to do On that. A... I'm waiting shuttle for Nick shuttle face. <laughs> After the first round, uh, both teams, this might be a first, uh, are locking in so quickly. Uh, that, you know, they're knowing the answers right away, uh, which means that they're pretty evenly matched, uh, which the scores reflect. It is 40 to 40, both teams uh, neck and neck still after the end of the first round here. It's like we're 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 answering quickly because we're either sure or totally not sure. <laughs> That's true. Exactly. Well, you sound very confident, though. We sound confident, but the score Where is, is about <laughs> about average confidence. Yeah, that's true. Average Which is confidence. Good. We we aim okay. for that like that middling sort of uh, sort of game. So that's great. Now, uh, Jay, you uh, seem to know at least a little bit about the cosplaying uh, of the early question. There, have you dressed up as a character before? I have not, but back in I did go to science fiction comic book conventions back uh, before in the early eighties when I was younger. There clearly. Were, yeah, were they pretty was, wild? They were, um, well, probably a less fancy dress up, uh, more drugs, and uh, this when I was yeah. going as a sixth grader, the first time I ever saw anyone do cocaine. It's like, hey, cool. <laughs> I won't mention the Janelle's author. Janelle's looking but... at Jay like this is the first she's hearing of this. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I won't mention the author, but there were several, and they were very kind and all. And, Stephen they, King. They just talked really fast. I learned where ideas come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, did they share? If they were kind, they'd really definitely share. Yeah. <laughs> no, Adam, are you a, are you a class player? Uh, no, I really should get into it because I admire it, and um, I've only dressed for Halloween before, but uh, well, I'm also kind of lazy. You said you crochet, so it, it seems like you have some like yes. physical creative ability. So. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, I was like, I could do something like this. So who would, Plus you, I, who would you uh, do if you were to cosplay? So the only thing I've ever done for Halloween, and this was a deep cut, was I was a specific episode of Doctor Who where the, when the 10th becomes the 11th. There's a very specific episode where he still has the clothes of the 10th, but has some of the features of the 11th. And so that one episode, that one Doctor costume, I did once and nobody understood it. Even people who watch the show. I, I've done so, those too, where I, I yeah. had to explain what it was all the time. Yeah, but, I uh, feel like that's been every year. Follow yeah, your for heart. Me. I say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. dress up what you want to dress up as. Well, the one person who gets it, and maybe at Comic Con they would get it. Uh, that make you know, mean the world. Yeah. Well, it's time for the spiral round. I mean, the swing round. It's happening. Uh, go ahead and uh, let us know what we're in store for. All right. Uh, for the swing ground, uh, it's going to be Barbie, of course. Uh, it was definitely the most popular cosplay at Comic-Con this year, uh, which means cosplayers had to design their outfits basically before the movie came out because it started. The Comic-Con started the same day as Barbie released. Uh, fortunately, there were enough proportional material to, for, to uh, design an outfit off of. But Barbie's also known for having many different jobs, and her career options have changed with the times. I'm going to just give you 10 jobs Barbie has had, and all you need to do is rearrange them to be in chronological order from when that Barbie version was released. Uh, some of these might be in clothing packs, not officially new dolls, but they're basically the same for this purpose. So the 10 are going to be U.S. Army officer, presidential candidate, doctor, makeup department worker, astronaut, beekeeper, Olympic swimmer, computer engineer, vice presidential candidate, and flight attendant. And for scoring here, we will uh, say we will rearrange these um, and say what's in the one position, what's in the two position, and a correct answer will be an answer that's in the correct position. Five points each, uh, correct position. So uh, let's go to break, and we'll be right back. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. And we are back, and before we get our answers for the swing round, a quick message from Neil. Yeah, well, uh, all of our... Shut up! 
<laughs> all of our guests, thank you, Ken. All of our guests here today uh, are patrons, so uh, we appreciate all of their support. So if you'd like to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast, where you'll get a lot of bonus audio content, uh, such as crop drop episodes, which are Ask Me Anything style episodes, as well as Patreon bonus episodes, which are just extra trivia for you each month. Uh, and you get a lot of extra other perks as well, like uh, all the new episodes uh, releasing a little bit earlier ad-free on Patreon. So if you'd like to join uh, Janelle, Jay, and Adam, you can go to patreon.com slash trivialitypodcasts. And one other perk that I'm working on for the patrons is giving an exclusive look at my new book, which I'm super excited to announce. Uh, it's called Behind the Screens. Uh, you can find it uh, basically you know, anywhere you find books. Uh, the tagline of the book is illustrated floor plans and scenes from the best TV shows of all time. So there's about 40 TV shows. Uh, the artist and Yaki drew uh, a bunch of overhead layouts of different TV shows, uh, sets, and props. And then I provided all the text as far as historical information, behind-the-scenes trivia, Easter eggs, and more. So um, if you're a fan of TV or if you're just a fan of pop culture trivia and want to learn a little bit more, it's a great coffee table book coming out October 10th. And if you pre-order it, uh, it helps out the book greatly. And I'm going to try and get an exclusive look for all of our patrons to uh, get a little uh, little taste before it comes out. Nice. And uh, before we go to the swing round, too, did you see what Jeff was just doing while you were saying that stuff? I tried to not he, to pay attention was, to Jeff. He was eating peanut butter M&Ms, but the way he was doing it was ripping the M&Ms in half, taking a look at the guts, and then popping them in his mouth like a complete psychopath. Yeah, he he is a, he's the film villain of eating M&Ms. Is that how you always eat your peanut butter M&Ms? I hate it. I no, I, I ate it. <laughs> I, I wanted peanut M&Ms, and I realized they're peanut butter, and I had to look my disappointment in the eye. And rip it in half. <laughs> All right. Jeff well. is the, the eater of gummy bears who rips off the head first, and then... Don't get it. me wrong. Like, I have some weird idiosyncrasies, but I can't say that's one of them. Well, I just saw you do it, so add it to the list. Um, and speaking of lists, we have to run down our Barbie career list. So once again, uh, the questions are basically first position, second position, third position, and we are going to fill in the careers... Um, uh, in the correct positions, and each correct position will be worth five points. So once again, those careers in uh, in no order are U.S. Army officer, presidential candidate, doctor, uh, makeup salesperson, astronaut, beekeeper, U.S. Olympic swimmer, uh, computer engineer, vice presidential candidate, and uh, flight attendant. So uh, in the first position, we had flight attendant. In second, we had makeup in third, we had the doctor. Then fourth, we had astronaut. Fifth, we had vice presidential. Sixth, we had presidential. Seventh, we said swimmer. Eighth, we said beekeeper. Ninth, we said computer engineer. And tenth, we said U.S. Army officer, being the most recent. Okay. Well, we had some similar ones that you all had, but our list is slightly different. Uh, we have first uh, makeup department worker to flight attendant, three, doctor, four, Olympic swimmer, fifth, we had army officer, sixth, we had vice president, seventh, we had astronaut, eighth, we had computer engineer, ninth, we had beekeeper, and tenth, we had president. And now for the true list. It's going to be a little rough. <laughs> I'm going to preempt. Uh, there are a couple... I added a couple tricks that maybe uh, I shouldn't have, but we'll, I'll, I'll get it to it when I get to it. So the first job... Either way, it'll be interesting to know. Yeah, it's actually kind of interesting, the history. I have a little bit of uh, trivia attached to some of these. The first job she ever had was a fashion model in 1959. That's Barbie, what she was, March 9th, 1959, same as my birthday. Uh, in 1961, she became a flight attendant, originally for American Airlines, later for Pan Am. Uh, she briefly did a stint of Japan Airways and Virgin Atlantic. But Friday Tenant, you know, 60s uh, was the time. She was an astronaut next at 65, two years after the first female astronaut from Russia, 20 years before the first American female astronaut. Um, so I guess she's a pioneer in that area. Uh, she became an Olympic swimmer in 1975. So that's three. Uh, in the 80s, you know, she went to the mall to become the makeup department store worker. So that's four. Uh, 82 and 88 she finally got her md as a doctor uh in 89 maybe to preempt the gulf war or something uh she became a u.s army officer that's six she ran for president in 1992 although you wouldn't couldn't tell because she basically looked like a, she was wearing a prom dress a red white and blue prom <laughs> dress 
uh, in in the Seven. next election. She's been running for president every four years since, basically. <laughs> uh, she's the Eugene Victor Debs of um, yeah. little plastic <laughs> models. Uh, and uh, she first, and as you could tell, she first ran for president, and then later uh, we'll see where she tries to go for president, vice president. But then between that, she was a computer engineer in 2010. This was the infamous one where it came with a book that uh, they had to recall because the book basically said she was bad at her job. Like she caused a, like a virus <laughs> and a male colleague had to fix it for her. <laughs> so caused a virus. She like either installed a virus or she <laughs> built her own vi I didn't read the book, but she basically- She clicked on a phishing email. <laughs> let, me, yeah. let me tell you something. <laughs> Uh, making a virus requires some level of computer oh, yeah. engineering. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Whatever happened, she didn't intend to have happen. So, but a male had to fix it for her. So, so that, that was, was that was nine. Her. Nice and progressive. That was 2010. eight. That was eight. Twenty ten. Uh, Twenty sixteen. She was both the presidential candidate and the vice presidential candidate, and she was her own uh, like uh, team, like her own like election team. She was there's a four Barbie set, um, but. Fun fact: She never became president officially until 2023 with the uh, with the President Barbie that Asa Ray plays in uh, the movie. Oh, she was always funny. it's always kind of a weird branding where she was both the candidate, but then she came with a blazer when she became president. But the first time she was ever president in like at the at the time when the bar that was released was 2023. Uh, before that, she was still running at the, and then you were kind of assuming that she would win because apparently she. There's no like 21st Amendment or 22nd Amendment stuff like that to stop her. Uh, and then last is uh, Beekeeper 2018. You know, hipsters love beekeeping. Uh, other things she happened more recently was uh, farmer's market stall worker. Uh, what do you call Influencer. it? Influencer. Uh, kind of. Uh, pet photographer is, is one of the more recent ones. Uh, so, yeah. Did you say panda feet photographer? Yes. Pet. <laughs> That too. Um, Did you not see the billboards, Neil? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got so one. for us, five points. We also we just got one. We only got the computer engineer right, I think. So, but that was a wild ride. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a really wild ride and very timely too with the with the movie. Uh, and yeah, both teams neck and neck again, five points each. So forty five to forty five going into the second round. All right, second round. Uh, Kalki twenty eight ninety eight A D twenty eight ninety eight eighty formerly known as Project K, is an epic science fiction film uh, that had its full name, Kalki 2898, uh, revealed at Comic-Con. It was filmed in Remoji Film City, the largest film studio complex in the world, according to Guinness. What country was Kalki 2898 or Project K filmed in? We don't, we're looking at, you know, the name. We have no idea, but... The name sounds Japanese. Yeah. But... Well, I think we should just go with the, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, it could be, all right. Feeling it could be India, because, but uh, even though the name sounds I like India, sounds good. Let's go with that. Okay. Okay. All right, we're going with India. All right, uh, we said the same, because they have a huge film industry. And that is right, it was filmed in Hyderabad, India. Okay, question 12. Paramount Plus was big at Comic-Con, advertising its collection of Star Trek in hopes of attracting new subscribers. Star Trek has been a mainstay in pop culture and has even pervaded our everyday lives. What well-known group of people did Ronald Reagan favorably compare to Klingons, which seems ironic given that Klingons were in part modeled after communist forces? We don't know either. What do you think, Sweeter? I was thinking... Iran Contra. I was thinking the Contras down in Central America who were fighting communists, but I don't know if that's well known or if that's anymore. So I like that answer. Let's go with it. Contra? Yeah. Okay. Contra. The Contra rebels. I think good. I know this that's answer. That's a good guess. We're just gonna say as uh as the Republican uh you know, nemesis uh during elections, we're gonna say the Democrats is what Reagan compared to Klingons. I think you're close. I think I think I've heard this quote before and he says they remind me of Congress. Neil's correct. Yeah. Uh I did want to add favorably compare just to make sure uh you actually liked Klingons because they reminded of Congress. Uh, I see. Uh, <laughs> but yes. I don't know what he saw, but uh maybe time they were different back then. 
So, uh, question 13. Not to be outdone by, outdone by Paramount, NBC tried to excite fans with a Comic-Con experience for a reboot of what popular TV show? Although it will not include its star actor, who jumped at the chance to play Captain Jonathan Archer in Star Trek Enterprise. So I'm looking for the TV show. All right, they're locking in. Uh, we don't really have too much of an idea, right? NBC reboots. So you say the character is named Archer, or the actor is Archer? So the actor in Star Trek was Captain Jonathan Archer, but the actor who played Jonathan Archer was in the original version of this TV show, but will not be reprising oh. his role. I was gonna say maybe Quantum Leap, but that was Sam because Sam jumps, right? Yeah. Talking about Scott Bakula. Um, oh, maybe. It, yeah, it could be, right? So maybe it's uh, Quantum Leap. We went with Quantum Leap. The actor in question is Scott Bakula, who played Jonathan Archer, and the show is Quantum Leap. Nice. One of the most depressing endings of all time. Maybe we'll, maybe the reboot can... Yeah, fix it. Fix it. Um, man, you both of you just right on line with the answers here. I love it. Well, I knew he was a Star Trek captain. I didn't know his character, though. Did you know he was also in NCIS? <laughs> yeah. New Orleans, your favorite show. Yeah. Did you know he played Chuck's dad in the NBC TV okay. show Chuck? <laughs> Did you know uh... he was a quarterback in Necessary Roughness? <laughs> 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 All right, enough Scott Bakula shenanigans. Right. Uh, where are we at? Question 14. Lego also had a large presence at Comic-Con this year with a booth that showed off their large collection of model sets based on popular movies. They went all out by creating a booth that resembles what store chain founded in 1985, but is now hanging on by a thread. Unless you live in Bend, Oregon, this may have been the best way to experience this store. Contrary to popular belief, there are none in Alaska anymore. Uh, we're going to lock in. We'll lock that one in. Our, uh, they locked in first, so oh, we're going to talk okay. about it. What did we, what do you think? Well, Bend, Oregon, I think, was the real giveaway there, which is a town not that awful far from Port Orchard, Washington, where we live uh, so I'm going to go with uh, Blockbuster. And the last Blockbuster and Bend. You have you have some Blockbuster experience, Neil. I do. I loved working at Blockbuster. I uh, had a few hiccups there. Um, I got yelled at on my birthday on New Year's. New Year's Day, a man came in and said, I'm not paying this late fee. I'm a doctor. And I said, I'm sorry. The, the rules apply to everyone, sir. And he yelled it again. He said, I'm a doctor. So had to give him his, his fee back. Was, his it $2 medical, was it a medical movie? Uh, it was not a medical movie. It was uh, a then... softcore porn. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> but that's my blockbuster experience uh, in a nutshell other than uh, we got robbed once and our manager ran out jumped on the car and hang on to the car as it uh, swerved around uh, the parking lot and fell off okay and we also said blockbuster long story short uh, yeah, Blockbuster, or in this case, it was Brickbuster, but uh, they even gave out little Brickbuster cards. Yeah, Blockbuster is the answer. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you should look up the Brickbuster booth at Comic Con. It is, they went all out for that one. And speaking of Brickbuster, uh, just a little ad our Bloodsport series is back. If you remember the movie, Frank Dukes, played by Jean Claude Van Damme, breaks bricks with his hand. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely check out our, our Bloodsport season three that's out right now. We're going to have 24 total episodes, uh, three different rounds of trivia with. Uh, 32 competitors being whittled down to eight and then down to one for champion. So we're super excited to have it back, and we hope everyone enjoys it. Funny thing is when JCVD tried to crush a Lego brick with his hand, it just uh, it left just an hurt. imprint yeah. forever, and he screamed out in pain. Uh, all right, question 15. Uh, one of the most ubiquitous pieces of swag this year uh, came from the Hulu booth. It was a lime green backpack but looked like a 2D comic panel. The effect of a three-dimensional object looking two-dimensional can be seen from what pop artist in works such as Man with Folded Arms, Goldfish Full, perhaps famously her House series. All right, another lock-in. Uh, do you know any pop artists who know who are known for the uh, 3D, 2D illusion? I don't. No. Lichtenstein. <laughs> A little too old, but let's go Probably. With it. I mean, Escher was the other one I was going to joke, but even little, older. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. Tap. All right. We seeing a lot of these pencil drawings uh, growing up. I, we just went with MC Escher because that was the only one I could think of. All right. Uh, the answer was indeed uh, Roy Lichtenstein. Oh, <laughs> oh Ken. Oh, you guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, his houses they look like a flat 2D, but then when you turn around, you can see they're full out. Um, I think people have made purses uh, with that same style before, but uh, definitely... 
one of his signature works, I think, is his house series. I think Ken just subconsciously wants the score to remain the same for the rest of the game. <laughs> so uh, after five in the second round, both teams picking up 30. It's 75 to 75. Uh, question 16. Magic the Gathering had a panel during Comic-Con uh, during where they discussed their latest Universes Beyond line. Universes Beyond is a crossover product between Magic and other intellectual properties, including Street Fighter, Fortnite, and upcomingly Doctor Who. A recent Universes Beyond product created quite a frenzy to find a specially stamped one-of-a-kind card, which offers for up to mil two million were for it. What signature item does this card represent? Unfortunately, the cards for men, dwarves, and elves don't command such a high price. Yep. Uh, Ken and I can lock in. Oh, we're going to go... Uh... We don't know much about Magic Gathering, but um, the men, elves, and dwarves thing, we're going to guess with the ring. The ring from Lord the, of the Rings. The ring from Lord of the Rings. The, the ring. Yeah. Uh, great yeah. guess. Uh, it is the one ring from Lord of the Rings. And after taking a look at some of those cards and seeing uh, the art for the Goldberry card, we now know why Tom Bombadil was such a merry fellow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the one ring is our answer. Uh, yes, the one ring. Yeah, there was one specific one ring card stamped one of one. Uh, and uh, it was a search was on to find it. Uh, question 17. The first Comic-Con panel for Pokemon happened this year, which is notable for it being a turning point in the series as Ask Catchem will no longer be on the show. Regardless, Pokemon will always be a part of us, sometimes literally. Give me either the Pokemon or the protein in retinal synapses named after said Pokemon due to its lightning fast moves. If you remember this question from when it was asked on misinformation, you'd already know the answer. We're going to lock in with just we? an answer that yeah. we're not super there. sure about. What do we have, Jeff? So I was thinking, I don't know where this fits, but I isn't the like the Mylian sheath the thing that surrounds like neurons that helps like electrical activity, like fire along synapses quicker? You got me. <laughs> the Mylian sheath. Not to be confused with the Mylian Sheik, who was uh, one of Neil's favorite wrestlers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so pick a Pokemon. Uh, a lightning Pokemon to be. A lightning Pokemon? I mean, there's only one lightning Pokemon, as far as I'm concerned. Pick a different one. Because it's not right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, who's the, who's like the, like the dude, like the, do you know, not Electro Buzz. Was it Electro Buzz? Well, that's not it. <laughs> Electrode. Who's the electro the electric EV? Volteon. Alright, we'll say Volteon. And we just went with Pikachu, because that was the only one we could think of. There is really only one electric Pokemon out there. That's Pikachu. Wow. Uh Pikachu or Pikachurin is uh the, the answer to that one. Holy well. Uh, <laughs> well. Time to retire, Jeff. Fermented Shark takes the lead. Big moment. I, I will say, I think for Janelle and Jay, uh, and both both of you have been to Iceland. I was just in Iceland recently. I think that the Icelandic air is just giving them an extra oomph today. That might be it. Uh, question 18. Sharknado celebrated its 10th anniversary this year at Comic-Con. Uh, I was kind of surprised by that. Fish tornadoes are very rare, but not unheard of. One way this can happen is the formation of a funnel cloud that forms a tornado over water that could potentially suck up fish and move them onto land. What is the name of this weather phenomenon? Do you know that? I think so. Okay. Okay. We'll lock in with that one. All right. We are going to say it's the uh, the sashimi rain. Great. All right. I think we're going to go with sea spout. All right. Uh, I will I will give it to you because I think the official name is water spout, but it's, yeah. Oh, I see. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not sashimi rain. No? You sure? No. Uh, I Googled it. No. <laughs> New film, <laughs> sashimi rain's coming out, though. Oh, yeah, it's, it's slated for 2026. All right. Uh, question 19. In addition to the official Comic-Con masquerade, the online retailer Her Universe hosts its own fashion show at Comic-Con. This year, Judge's winner was Rachel Pedersen with her totally mini dress, which is modeled after Minnie Mouse. What is mini short for? Yeah, let's go with the... We're going to go with Minerva. Minerva Mouse. Right. I think you're right. That's what we guessed. God, Minerva. God bless you all for the answers that you give. <laughs> uh, Minerva is correct. Oh, yes, wow. Minerva wow. Mouse. They don't really use that word, you know, name very often, but it, it's there. Okay, and the final question, regulation question 20. 
Uh, finally, we'll talk about Marvel. Marvel always saves some reveals for Comic-Con, and one of its reveals was the first footage of the new X-Men series on Disney+, Plus, which picks up where the Fox Kids X-Men the Animated Series leaves us. As such, the show's name is very clear on its lineage by telling us exactly when that was. What is the name for this new X-Men show? You're looking for the year that I skipped CCD to watch X-Men. <laughs> oh, then we know it. Never mind. We're locked in. <laughs> 1989. Oh, no. You want to just go? I don't, I, that's my, I can't think of anything else. What do you think? I don't know. 89. 89. 89, sure. It was a good year. So they say. All right. I'm going with uh, 1989. We're going with a little bit later. We're going to say 95. Uh, getting closer, it is X Men 97. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. I was like, so I was like, the original coin series, flip. yeah, ended in 1997. And so this new series just, Picks up where it left off. <laughs> Speaking of that song, which is one of the greatest uh, theme songs ever, uh, yeah. same composer as the Power Rangers theme song. And if uh, if you ever listen to the Power Rangers theme song, you're like, man, that guy is really out of tune who's singing the background vocals because the, the composer who composed it just did that as a temp track, but they just left it in because they never re-recorded it. So uh, there you well, go. Speaking of uh, 95... Speaking of 95, Op and Barbie uh, is picking up 20 points in the second half of the second round. So you have 95 going into the, the final round. And Fermented Shark uh, still sniffing that Icelandic air, picking up 40, bringing their toll to 115. So let's hear these uh, final round categories uh, that you have for us, Adam. All right. The categories are Marvels, Detectives, Dark Horses, Images, and Booms. All right, the wagers are now in. Uh, we're doing 20s as much as we can, except for images. We're just doing the 15. So we're pushing all in, hoping for a good result. Uh, the other team, doing 10s all the way down. So the let's see if the conservative bet works out. Uh, go ahead with the questions. All right, in question one, marvels. If you're looking to marvel at a unique sculptural design at the intersection of science and architecture, look no further than Neri Oxman's work. One of her most famous works is Silk Pavilion, in which she released 6,500 silkworms onto a dome to create a silk structure. She can be defined by a two-word phrase that she coined, which reflects her method of thinking deeply about how resources interact with each other and the environment. Question two, detectives. While known as being strike busters and recently used against a Magic the Gathering leaker, the Pinkertons were known as a detective agency that hired women and people of color for the use as spies. One such woman, Kate Warren, was the first female detective who helped uncover and foil the assassination of President-elect Abraham Lincoln, named after which U.S. city? Three, Dark Horses. One of my favorite recent Dark Horse candidates has to be the author of such books as A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles, Illuminata, and The Give of Chance, which is considered Oprah's spiritual guru. Their political views are in favor of rep reparations, raising the federal minimum wage, and creating a department of peace. Who is this person? Four, images. Jermaine Kroll was a political activist and photographer who is best known for a collection of photographs of railways, bridges, bicycle wheels, and buildings, famously the Eiffel Tower, in order to capture the essentially masculine subject of the industrial landscape. What is this collection called? Five, booms. We haven't talked about Oppenheimer yet. While Oppenheimer is most about the men involved in the Manhattan Project, there were women involved as well. One such woman was Maria Gerpert Mayer, who studied how this separates uranium isotopes. While working on this, she developed a model of the nucleus that led to a Nobel Prize in physics. What is the name of this model, which can be likened to the nuclear analog to Bohr's electron model? All right, we have our questions, and we'll be right back. All right, we have our answers in, at least what we think are the answers. We have we have one for sure. <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, let's uh, get the questions one more time. You can get, just give us an abbreviated version, and we'll, we'll tell you what we think it is. Sure. So question one in Marvels, uh, what is the two-word phrase that characterizes Neri Oxman's work? It reflects her, what, like, how inter resources interact with each other. Uh, we said artistic naturalism, which I just made up for uh, 20 points. All right, I like it. Well, with with the uh, talking about silkworms and creating a dome, we thought about maybe weaving, so we said um, echo weaves. Uh, both those sound pretty good, actually. Uh, the first, the term is material ecology. So 
I'll try to sort of define it as resources interact with each other. Sounds like I've a, seen uh, some of that work. Sounds like a Prince album. Yeah. Question two: What uh, was the name of the plot uh, where uh, to assassinate President Elect Abraham Lincoln? What city was that? Oh, uh, we just said for twenty points that was the Wichita plot. And who are you? well-known Wichita plot? We went with uh, Baltimore for ten. Baltimore is correct. Oh, yes, it was nice. the Baltimore plot. I think because the he was changing trains in Baltimore and they were going to create a distraction and then uh, kill him. Um, but then he sort of disguised himself so they wouldn't know who he was. The distraction was a bunch of people singing, Good morning, Baltimore. Yeah. The, yeah and exactly. then John, John Waters, Waters came out there. and flashed the uh, <laughs> possible assassin. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, question three. In Dark Horses, what is the Dark Horse candidate who is Oprah's spiritual guru and wants to create a Department of Peace, among other things? So for 20, this is the one that we think we have. Marianne Williamson. Oh. <laughs> we actually said Williams, so... Mm, it is officially William's okay. son, Marianne mm, Williams. So we missed that. Uh, in question four, in images, uh, what is the uh, collection of photographs from Jermaine Kroll, which captures bridges, bicycle wheels, Eiffel Tower, railways, etc.? Well, uh, for 15 points, we said, I mean, I didn't name it. I don't know why the, it was named this. It's very redundant. But we said the male phallus. We said for 10 points, manscapes. <laughs> Love it. Great answer. It's great. Uh, it's a bit more simple, a bit more artsy, but it's uh, just metal. Oh, um, nice. Yes, just, just two pictures of metal things, and then they called it metal. Uh, in question five, and booms, uh, Maria Gopert Mayer had got a Nobel Prize for her model of the nucleus. Uh, what is the name of that model? Uh, for 20 points, we just said the planetary model. All right. We did not know, so for 10 points, we said the mononucleosis. <laughs> uh, planetary, <laughs> planetary mill is is similar. I think you might we're on the right track uh, visually. At least it is the nuclear shell model, which is similar to Niels Bohr's atomic uh, uh. shell model. Uh, you've probably seen the image where it's a core and then several layers of circles are outside of it, uh, which I think is why you might consider it a planetary model. At the end of regulation, Op and Barbie uh, just couldn't get approval or security clearance to win this game, so uh, they're going to end with 40 points, losing 55 of their... That wasn't Knuff. It wasn't Knuff for, for Op and Barbie, uh, ending with 40 points. But uh, as we said, it was the Icelandic air uh, proving to be uh, the difference maker here today as Fermented Shark uh, only lost 30 points there and will win the game with 85 points, making them today's cream of the crop. The cream of the crop! Nobody does it better. Yes, nice. We're nice the cream job. of the crop today. Well done. What was our yes. top That's question? A one. Yeah. yeah, you did good. You guys did good too. You guys, we were neck and neck for so long. Slugfest. Well, now it's time for the saddest part of the day to say goodbye. Uh, any uh, final uh, parting shots or or polite statements that you'd like to make? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. We had the best time, and I uh, appreciate you coming up with such great questions, Adam. That was a great game. Thanks so much. It was great. All right. And uh, yeah, like we said, Adam, thank you for writing the questions. Excellent job uh, hosting. Any final statements from you? Uh, it's been fun. If you're listening and you haven't been paying these boys, you should pay these boys. Uh, they're doing great work <laughs> and they're sweating their ass off just to make a podcast. So uh, go, go on that. That Get is the, true. The, uh, crop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Patreon for <laughs> as little as $1 a month can significantly help everybody gave a dollar be it'd be sweet yeah and you get ad free episodes often the day before yeah so so that's something to look forward to good stuff well as much as i've enjoyed the music of adam large and the overtons it is time to go i want to thank them and of course airwave media our network you can find them at airwavemedia.com and check out other shows such as the constant my history can beat up your politics and the team house sound uh, very interesting yeah and uh that'll do it for today for our guests today jeff neil matt in puerto rico and uh myself that was triviality 